guys? <laughs> Meet Oliver. Later on, you'll hear him meowing at the door because he has discovered the downstairs and only wants to go down there and meows and meows and meows and doesn't stop meowing. So we're just gonna hold him here for a little while, awkwardly in our arms. Oliver is one of the two new members of my household. The other is Petey and you will see him shortly as well. I just wanted to make a video introducing them and talking a little bit about the rescue I got them from because I, I want to help them out. It's a small operation, they're all volunteers, and they work on the small adoption uh, donations and things they get from their Amazon wish list and, and their own money. So if I can help them out and if anyone wants to check out their Amazon wish list down in the description below or donate in any way or adopt a cat please feel free. I know I'm going to get a little criticism for adopting cats from a different country. I have already heard anything you have to say. <laughs> and I just wanted to address some of it in this video as well, because I am aware that it sounds crazy. These are not local kittens. I did not get them in the Netherlands. They are American. It was not the plan. <laughs> I um, previously had a cat named Elliot, who you probably have seen. He was a snowshoe Siamese. He was born in the backyard of a friend in Van Nuys, California. Um, I helped kind of trap his litter and fell in love with him and took him home. And he's, he was my best, best friend for 16 years, along with my dog, Miley, who was a Yorkie, and she was a gift and from a breeder, I'm pretty sure not from a rescue. I had been looking at rescues, but my boyfriend surprised me with a dog for Christmas. He and his kids went and found her somewhere. She's got papers, you know, with her parents' names on it and everything. <laughs> a little genealogy tree. I feel a little hypocritical having not had a shelter dog, but I did not choose her and I definitely believe in adopting and not shopping, as, as they say. Oh, here's Petey. Hey, oh dear, no, dangerous business. So my plan was that after both of my pets had died, I would take some time off and not get a new pet for a while, a couple years maybe, and I would spend time traveling and, and doing things that are a little more difficult to do when you have pets to take care of and find care for or travel with. So that was the plan. However, everyone knows how this year turned out and there has been no traveling. So after a couple months um, of all this isolation, I, I was getting pretty lonely. I really missed Elliot and finally decided that since there seemed to be no end to this in sight and I don't know when I'll get to travel again, that I would just go ahead and get uh, new cats. I decided on two because I wanted them to have each other, have playmates when I'm not home and I think it's a good idea. I probably should have done that with Elliot, but at least, at least he had the dog <laughs> at some point. So not quite the same, but I decided just because I still so missed Elliot that I wanted to get another snowshoe or Siamese mix and hopefully get oh no I decided just because I was still really missing Elliot and um, wanted kind of to see his face and, and and have a cat with a similar personality I know it's always kind of a gamble you never know what kind of personality they're going to have um, but I decided I wanted to try to find another snowshoe or Siamese mix and I started looking in the Netherlands. However, in my searching after weeks, like one showed up and she was taken really quickly. Um, as are most of the cats on, on the websites I would check, they, there's great demand for cats and, and apparently even more for dogs. I kept getting warned of scams for dogs in the Netherlands because I guess there's more demand than supply. I knew going to breeders was technically an option. I saw that available uh, and people would sell, you know, their purebred Siamese cats and whatnot, but that's not what I want to do. Like I, I want to give a home to cats who need homes. 
It's ridiculous to breed cats, sorry, and dogs. So eventually I expanded my search and I discovered that in some countries like Spain, there are tons of homeless cats living in colonies and people are rescuing them and even transporting them up north here where there's more demand. So that was interesting to learn and I inquired about a couple snowshoes down in Spain and just never, I either wouldn't hear back or they would already been spoken for. So it wasn't working out. At some point I saw an ad for a cat needing a home in Texas. And he was adorable. He reminded me of Elliot without looking exactly like him. And I thought, you know, I'll just put in an application. And if it's meant to be, it'll be. I kind of hoped they would reject me. I kept saying, you know, I know, I understand, I'm in Europe. Perfectly fine if you say no. But they liked my application and approved me. So I was like, okay, well, if we figure out the transport, which was a pain, thank you, COVID. But we did figure out transport. And I asked if he had a buddy that could come with him because I wanted to. And, and I thought it would be easier for him to just travel with, you know, someone he liked. And they sent me a picture of his friend, Logan, who I have renamed as Oliver. So I, I accepted Petey and Logan, and we brought them over here at the beginning of February, and they have been exploring and enjoying their new lives so far. But about this rescue, I wanted to talk about the rescue. It's called SOS, Siamese Oriental and Snowshoe Rescue, and they operate in Texas, and they, they, are, they work with other organizations as well and rescue Siamese cats. Petey was found in a backyard with his sister covered in fleas, dirty, poor little baby, and they were rescued. His sister was adopted before I saw his picture, otherwise I probably would have taken her. Oliver was rescued from a colony with his siblings in the same area. This is the Rio Grande Valley in, in Texas. Apparently some poisoners had started poisoning cats in this colony, so they they tried to find foster care for as many as they could, including Oliver. Apparently this region has the highest euthanasia rate in the country and the most homeless cats and kittens. Um, so if you'd like to help out SOS or any other rescues in that area, they've got a lot of work on their hands because People, for some reason, are not spaying and neutering their animals, and this is what happens. I find it absolutely insane that people would do this. Either spay and neuter your cats, or don't let them outside. What they're doing is letting them go outside, they get pregnant, and then they don't want them, and they just toss them out or, or, or whatever, and then they give birth to kittens, and they'll toss them in garbage bins, or they'll leave them at the shelter door, and, and the shelters, apparently, if you leave motherless kittens there, will just euthanize them because it's too difficult to take care of them, whatever. So you're not doing a good deed when you leave them at the shelter like that. I know, all out of sight, out of mind. We, we took them to a good place. They should be fine. No, they're not. I think what is it? Most shelter animals have like 72 hours to get adopted before being euthanized or something. I don't know. But uh, California and Texas have the worst rates in the U.S. with um, under 75% of animals being rehomed. The rest are euthanized. So it's not the same situation here in the Netherlands from what I have read, been told. Um, it's usually a no-kill situation here. It's a more urgent situation in the U.S. In fact, there was an article I read about the Netherlands being the first country in the world to not have any stray dogs. I'm guessing that's not entirely true, but I think they've done a pretty good job with the stray population here without killing them, you know. But yeah, where Petey and Oliver are from, apparently kittens and cats are used as bait for dogs, or target practice, or God knows what. Um, there is some evil in the world. <laughs> so yes, I did import my cats from the US, and I know that sounds crazy, and people have said, why 
Didn't you just go to a shelter and pick out a black cat or an orange cat or a tabby cat or just whatever cat you saw first or the oldest, rattiest cat that needs help? And you know what? That, I mean, that's a legitimate way to pick out your pet. And maybe if it had been my first cat, I probably would have done that. But having had Elliot, I, I just had a preference. And I think it's not wrong to have a preference. I mean, you can have a preference between if you want a cat or a dog. You could ask me, why didn't I get a dog, you know? And if someone wants a dog, do they want a big dog? Do they want a little dog? It's their preference. You don't ask someone why they didn't get a different kind of dog, why they didn't get a bigger dog. As long as they gave a dog a home that needed a home, that's, that's what counts. So that's what I have to say about that. And when it comes to picking out an animal that perhaps might have higher medical bills or age-related problems or any other medical problems, I would love to do that. But I also am aware of my personal situation and want to be able to care for my pets as best I can and I am not prepared to take on like a deaf cat or a blind cat or a very old cat right now so hopefully in the future I can but right now it's not realistic for me and I do what I can. I think the main thing to remember is really you don't have to make somebody else happy with your choice of pets. They are not the ones who are going to be living with it day in and day out, caring for it, paying for the bills. You are. So it's up to you what kind of pet you want, whether it's a certain species or a certain breed. They don't have to live with it. You do. So they can have their opinions, but they go home to their own pets. They can pick out their own pets and they can do it however they want. They can do it blindfolded and point at one. Whatever they want to do, they're going to live with their pets. You have to live with yours. So, you know, put thought into what kind of pet you want and what you can handle financially or mentally or whatever. People are always going to have a problem with the way you want to live your life or what you want to do. As long as you're not getting your pet from a breeder and you're giving a, a home to someone who needs it, you're doing a good thing. And by doing that, you're also making room for another animal, let's say cat, who needs to get off the street and away from, you know, death at the hands of humans or whatever they're facing. So by bringing these guys out of their foster home, I've made room for two other cats that are in a dangerous position right now on the streets being used as target practice or something. So now, now there's room for them to have some safety. For every one life you adopt, you're saving another or giving them a chance. So although it wasn't ideal to get cats from so far away, I'm not unhappy with it. I'm, I'm glad to support this rescue. I'm glad to be making room for other cats that, that really need it in that area. And I'm glad to have Petey and Oliver here. We will be best friends for the next uh, decade or two. So that's all I wanted to say today. Sorry, this was not vintage related or anything like that, but I thought it was worth, worth talking about. Um, and hopefully you will check out the links below and either adopt a cat. These are all pretty much like Siamese cat rescues because that's what I was looking for. Or you can donate to any of them or specifically to the SOS rescue or get them something on the Amazon wish list. They are in Texas. They were affected by that recent snowstorm. Um, their foster house was without electricity or water for several days. So I'm sure they'd appreciate any kind of help you know, to, they have a house full of cats. So please just check below, see if there's anything you can do. Even a couple dollars helps, you know. Thanks for watching and thank you for any donations. If you end up adopting, please let me know in the comments. I, I would love to, to know if it's inspired you to save some lives. And if you've already adopted, I would love to hear your little 
love story in the comments as well. I'd like to know how you found your cat or dog. Did you travel for them? Did you find them while traveling? Did you find them locally? Um, I'd be very curious to hear your stories below. So that's it for today. We'll get back to the regular vintagey stuff next week, I think. I've made a schedule and I can't remember what I've put on uh, the schedule for next week, but hopefully it'll be entertaining. Okay. Bye. Whee!